Hello, uh, this is Li Zhang, and uh, welcome to joining us uh, in the uh, CGAP delivery community meeting. And uh, we canceled the previous meeting due to the uh, Kubicon uh, Europe because uh, folks are uh, have speak there, so uh, we don't. We, so we postponed the uh, several presentations uh, to uh, this time. And uh, so the main topic of today's meeting is about project presentation and we are very honored to have uh, two projects here the first one is litmus chaos which is already a since a project sponsored by cgap delivery and today uh, we are uh, very happy to invite them to give a project update uh, on litmus chaos uh, so what's new here and what's the progress of their since onboarding and uh, we'll see new features and we'll, we'll see next roadmap. So this is the first item we have. The second item we have is we are very happy to have a flagger project here, which is a, a automatic progressive application delivery system. And it can work seamlessly with Git, with GitOps with systems like Flux or Argo CD. So we, we are very happy to have a, its maintainer here. Uh, to give us the first presentation of Flagger uh, regarding to uh, uh, to how it works, uh, how it designed, and what scenarios can it be applied to, how it fits to the landscape of the CNCFC gap delivery. So we're very happy to have this project here. So, so I, I don't want to waste time here because we do have um, two projects to present and, present and uh, so I will 
let uh, Latimer scales folks to take over from here to do their presentation and then followed by uh, Blagger. So every presentation we hope it's like uh, 15 to 20 minutes, but it, it's not restricted. So, and we, we also have a very short QA after every presentation. So, okay, I'm not sure if uh, who will present the Latimer scales project here. Um, hi everyone, uh, this is uh, Karthik. Um, I think Uma is due to present about Litmus. Uh, he will just be joining us a few minutes from now. Could okay. we uh, go on with the, the next topic? Oh, okay, I think cool. Uma is here. Okay, no problem. So let's just uh, start from the flagger presentation. I, I believe Stanton, uh, it should be already, already be in the meeting, right? Hello, Harry. Hi, um, nice to see you. Yeah. Hey. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, you can take over from here. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am uh, very glad to be here uh, and present Flagger, a project I've started roughly two years ago. Um, yeah, it's now under uh, WeWorks and it's a WeWorks sponsored project. Um, let me uh, give you a short uh, overview of Flagger um, capabilities. First, uh, I'm going to talk about what is progressive delivery. Um, so progressive delivery is, is a wider term that, um, you know, um, encapsulates canary releases, A-B testing, uh, future flagging, all these techniques that have a single goal. And that goal is to um, reduce the risk of introducing a new software version in production. Um, and there are a couple of ingredients to achieve <laughs> progressive delivery. Um, most of them overlap with uh, continuous delivery, of course. Um, First, you have to have a, a CI pipeline that produces immutable artifacts, um, something uh, that signals that you shouldn't be um, using latest image tags in production. Everything should be immutable and uh, um, versioned in some way, either through a Git SHA or um, a Semver uh, tag, uh, for example, for Docker images. Uh, another ingredient should be that the CD pipeline um, should be designed in such a way that does uh, reconciliation. Um, most CD pipelines right now are just reacting to some event and only then are, um, you know, um, applying the, the state. And this is uh, something that um, GitOps covers, the way that you define your desired state and that, uh, that state is continuously reconciled, not only when, let's say, you do a git push. Um, something can change in the cluster at some point and <laughs> who is, uh, uh, who is uh, playing around? Hello. Uh, Who drew that? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, can you kick out the, the person that's... Uh, who, who's uh, that? Okay, let, me, let me try share again. Yeah, you can share again. Uh, Okay, second try. Uh, okay, and, um, so let's say you have your CD pipeline ready for, uh, for this kind of uh, reconciliation. Then progressive delivery needs um, a smart routing service, something that can uh, look at the traffic and route traffic dynamically between um, 
upstreams based on um, some properties of, of the traffic, like um, cookies, HTTP headers, weights, and so on. So this routing component cannot uh, work for just, um, um, let's say, the layer four CNI implementation. You need something at uh, layer seven. Hey, do you know do you know who is who is uh, uh, oh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Can you check the candies over there? I will call yeah. uh Amy I think to... we are zoomed bombed. <laughs> that is <laughs> never expected. Okay, I'll try to go for one one more thing. Um, <sighs> okay, so when we started working on Flagger, we set a couple of goals. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, Nazi science is the is the worst. Um, yeah, I think you should um, password protect the the channel, or I don't kick whoever is doing it. I can't, I can't remove the participants actually, but I think there's one person I'm now very familiar with. Like Sam Marie, can you identify yourself? Okay, so I will end the meeting for now and uh, please join us again, okay? Okay. Sure. We had a very similar problem <clears throat> during KubeCon as well, uh, Harry. <laughs> uh, pretty bad. Uh, yeah. 
I, it just so happened that when uh, we were presenting, so back of my mind, what it's happening again? Is it me that's like uh, causing the, all the stars to align very badly? So, yeah, I don't know. I thought one, our session was one of a uh, one of a one, but uh, looks like it's continuing. The, it was very very bad. They were just playing videos. So let's see. I think it's um, if that happens, it's probably best to talk, not to share anything. Um, okay, I, I, I found one thing to start at. So let me try this. Uh, it seems that I can stay to the meeting. Uh, I mean, to stop anybody to annotate to the presentation, I should be able to do that. Yes, so let me try. Yes, so, so Stefan, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, so if you, when you share a screen, you, you should choose uh, disable attendee, attendee annotation. There is a setting over there. Uh, yeah, it says you cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing or something like that. Uh, I mean, when you share the screen, you, you can choose uh, there the setting, uh, which name is uh, disable attendee annotation. You can try that. So I will stop sharing my screen and you can share your screen and then choose that, that setting. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me try. I have share computer sound, optimize screen share for whatever, that's about it. Maybe after more disable attendee annotation. Oh, okay. Can you find that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, where was I? Okay. <laughs> so, okay. On progressive delivery. So you need uh, immutable artifacts, um, a CD pipeline that applies the desired state. Uh, some kind of uh, L7 router. It can be an ingress controller or a service mesh. We'll talk about that a little later. And of course, you need something that uh, gives you observability into the network. Um, not only for performance stats, which let's say all layer seven uh, load balancers will give you uh, something like that, like um, request per second, error latency, but you could uh, also improve the observability by exposing business metrics then, and those metrics could later be used in your, um, in your delivery pipeline. Um, when we started Flagger, we set up some goals. Um, the major one uh, being uh, able to you know, give developer confidence in automating the production release, like deploy on Fridays, uh, it's no issue. Some, something will roll back if it fails. And that something should be uh, a thing that runs on its own, um, fully automated. And in order to, to give this kind of confidence, we, uh, we decided to expose um, um, some uh, fields, some things inside custom resources for developers to be able to control the blast radius, to define the validation process, um, run their own uh, integration tests or any kind of automated testing as part of the, of the deployment. And for those that require uh, manual uh, approval for um, uh, production releases. Uh, we also uh, added uh, manual gating to the to the whole process. Um, another goal is write as little YAML as possible. As you know, in Kubernetes land, everything is on YAML. So um, 
we want to trim that down when you define your uh, your delivery policy and of course we want to manage the whole process from uh, from a git repo uh, through GitOps. so flagger is a, a kubernetes operator uh, it controls traffic and allows you to um, uh, decouple the deployment of an application from the actual release process. And Flagger implements a couple of deployment strategies that you can um, choose based on your, um, uh, on the type of application that you want to, uh, to deploy. Um, one deployment strategy is a canary uh, release um, that's using progressive traffic shifting and this works great for applications that are exposing HTTP APIs or gRPC APIs. Um, another deployment strategy is A-B testing. And um, this, this is um, used for user-facing apps that need the session affinity. And I'm going to explain a little why this is needed. Let's say if you want to do a canary release with, with uh, traffic shifting for, for a front-end app, then what, what the traffic shifting means is you set up a percentage of your users and you redirect those to the new version. But if your app has static assets, like let's say JavaScript or HTML, and uh, also the um, HTTP API or a gRPC API on the backend, if you don't pin a, a user to a specific version, then um, they can get, let's say, the JavaScript asset for, from version one and the HTML from version two. So we can see how these two cannot uh, work fine together. So um, for, uh, for this type of apps, um, you have to, uh, to have a way to pin users to a specific version. And that's possible through HTTP headers or cookies um, by defining a regex or a, uh, or a value that matches those. Um, another strategy is blue-green with traffic mirroring. Um, what this does is um, users are um, interacting with, let's say, version one, and all that traffic is uh, cloned and uh, sent to version two, but the response is not returned to the user. So the user is, is not aware that all, it, all, all their actions are basically duplicated on, on the two versions. And this works great for either point and APIs. If you are using uh, traffic mirroring for I don't know, something that writes to a database, makes a transaction, then uh, you'll get duplicated data and so on. So this works great for things like uh, I don't know, a machine learning uh, model that you want to test or something like um, um, cache processing and stuff like that. And finally, blue-green, um, the classical blue-green with, with traffic switches, a traffic switch where you uh, spin up version two, you run the integration tests, uh, you run a load test on it, you determine that that version is okay, then you switch the whole traffic at once from V1 to V2. And this works great for I don't know, stateful application and legacy apps. how the canary uh, deployment strategy works. Uh, so you have, let's say a deployment running in your cluster. Um, that deployment is at version one. Um, you apply um, a change to that deployment. Let's say you change the uh, image tag to version two. And what Flagger does, instead of letting Kubernetes just do the rolling uh, update of, of that deployment, it spins up version two as a, as a different deployment and um, slowly starts to route traffic towards it. And while it does that, it also measures uh, latency error rate and, and other things to determine if the new version uh, um, is, um, is okay, is, um, respects your KPIs. And if that happens, then it, um, uh, it does the, um, in the final step, it does a Kubernetes uh, rolling update on the old version. Once that, that is finished, it waits for all the traffic to go back uh, 
to that uh, deployment, then it uh, scales to zero the, the canary release. Um, A-B testing works the same, just the fact that instead of using a traffic weight here, uh, we uh, segment, we use a user segment and only those users, let's say that have an insider's cookie or a header are uh, redirected to, to version two. And based on that traffic, uh, the, the decision is taken to uh, promote version two or roll it back. And blue green uh, is the same, but without any um, production traffic. Here you just run your conformance tests, load tests, everything goes okay, you do the switch, then your uh, users will be uh, interacting with the new version. Okay, so how you, you set up a, um, one of those strategies? Um, there is a custom resource called Canary. Inside the Canary, you can set a bunch of things. Um, you can tell Flagger where the deployment is, what uh, was the deployment name, uh, if that deployment has an horizontal pod autoscaler or not. Um, you define uh, what ports uh, your application uh, exposes. And, and then you can define how the canary analysis should be run. And here there are a bunch of things that you can specify like metrics, alerts, webhooks, and um, header matching if you are doing A-B testing and so on. So based on this definition, Flagger generates a bunch of objects. And if you Let's say if you want to do uh, a canary uh, setup manually, you'll have to duplicate all your uh, definitions. You'll have to have, let's say, two deployment definitions, two horizontal pod autoscalers, uh, two cluster IP services, and so on. Then you have to add uh, service mesh object objects or ingress controllers for each, uh, for each version. If you are using Flagger and the canary definition, um, then you can specify only your deployment and your horizontal pod autoscaler and Flagger will generate for you all these objects, including uh, Kubernetes, cluster IPs, service mesh objects if you are using a service mesh or uh, um, ingress objects if you are using an ingress controller. So this is how Flagger uh, simplifies a lot uh, the setup of a, of a canary release. And it also allows you to move from one service mesh implementation to another, or from one ingress controller to another without having to change anything um, inside your, uh, your deployments. In terms of traffic management, so Flagger works with a, with a couple of, um, service mesh implementations, Istio, Linkerd, and AppMesh. Um, if you are not using a service mesh and if you only want to do canary releases for your um, apps that are exposed outside the cluster, then you can use Flagger with uh, an ingress controller like Contour, Blue, Nginx, and two weeks ago, Skipper got um, also integrated into Flagger. Okay, how the validation process um, works. So Flagger comes with two built-in um, metrics um, based on Prometheus. So if you install Istio or Linkerd or any, any kind of um, service mesh or ingress controller, uh, these proxies will expose two metrics. One is the request success rate. From all your requests, how much, how, um, what's the percentage of, uh, of errors, let's say 500 errors, and um, request uh, latency. You can uh, determine, uh, let's say in the last minute, what's the average um, uh, request duration uh, of your users. And based on these two metrics, you can uh, set up KPIs. Um, you can also define uh, custom metrics and we'll see have an example uh, further on. And you can also specify webhooks that will be calling into your integration testing um, uh, platform. Um, you can run load testing and so on during the analysis. And of course, Flagger um, looks at the Kubernetes uh, objects and 
um, you know, queries the, the deployment health status. That's based on, you know, liftness and readiness probes. So for metrics, um, you can define custom metrics. So besides these two, the request success rate and request latency, if you want to extend the metrics to something else, let's say uh, your application uh, exposes uh, some custom Prometheus metrics, or you want to use uh, other things that your service mesh exposes, you can create a, an object called the metric template. And here you can define a Prometheus query or a Datadog query or a CloudWatch. And Flagger will call into all these services, uh, will run the query and based on the result, will uh, will decide to move forward with the Canary uh, release or roll it back. In terms of alerting, uh, Flagger uh, implements four alert providers, Slack, Microsoft Teams, Discord, and Rocket Chat. And you can configure uh, for a Canary release, uh, more than one provider. Let's say your SRE team is using Slack on a particular channel and your dev team maybe is using a Discord or something else. So with Flagger, you can, you can uh, funnel all these events to the, to the right team, no matter what, uh, what the provider they use. In terms of uh, testing, uh, there is a webhook sec uh, section where you can define, um, you can configure Flagger to call into your services at, at different stages in, uh, during the canary release. For example, you can uh, run Helm test before you expose uh, the new version to the live traffic to, to your users. And Flagger will be calling into a Helm test service will run your, your hand tests. If those are successful, then it goes to the next stage of the, of the canary release called rollout. And during that stage, for example, you can start a load test. Why a load test is needed? Because let's say you can deploy at any point in time, but maybe you don't have live traffic. So a load test is there to, uh, to generate traffic. So Flagger can, uh, have, Flagger can see metrics and, and decide what to do. And for load testing, there are three implementations. Hey is for uh, is a load test for HTTP. Um, there is also one for gRPC. And for conformance testing, there is support for Helm test, Bash tests, but you can also implement your own uh, test runner and tell Flagger to call into that. In terms of manual gating, um, there are um, several gates that you can set during the analysis. For example, uh, let's say you, you push a change in your production system, but um, you don't want that change to be automatically deployed or tested. So there is a confirm rollout um, webhook and Flagger will ask you, hey, I, I've detected a change. Do you want me to start the analysis or not? And after uh, the analysis is over, it can also ask you, hey, do you want to do the final stage, the promotion? Uh, or any, uh, at any point in time during the analysis, um, you can tell Flagger to roll back even if there are no errors. And all, all these things happen through, uh, through webhooks. Uh, in terms of integration, um, Flagger being a, a CRD controller works great with uh, in a GitOps pipeline. So let's say you change something in your deployment spec, uh, you commit that to Git, then um, a GitOps operator like Flux, Argo CD, or uh, Jenkins X uh, will uh, reconcile that object on the cluster. Flagger detects the new version and starts the canary analysis for you. Um, some things for the roadmap. Um, maybe you, you've heard uh, Microsoft uh, create a new um, service mesh implementation called Open Service Mesh that um, is based on the uh, SMI spec. Flagger implements SMI spec for Linkerd, so it should be uh, fairly easy to extend uh, support to Open Service Mesh. 
Um, we are looking at adding more pro, uh, metric providers. For example, maybe you want to look at Stack Driver or InfluxDB um, for, for custom metrics. Um, I'm pretty happy about uh, Kubernetes Ingress V2 API. It has all the things Flagger needs to, um, to implement all the strategies. So um, at some point, uh, I'm guessing the Ingress controllers will be switching from V1 to V2. And um, I, I want Flagger to be, to be ready for that switch. Um, other things on the roadmap are um, using Kubernetes jobs for conformance testing and having a, a dedicated service for uh, manual gating. And there are a couple of workshops um, for each service mesh implementation. And here are the links to the docs and, and the repo. Any questions? Yeah, I have, I have I have several questions. Yeah, so very wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, I, I'm very interested in the roadmap of the flagger because uh, there are several things uh, I want to ask. So, uh, do you have? I, I know you have already integrated with SMI. So, does that mean I can now use, for example, Microsoft's uh, Open Service Mesh directly with Flagger, or we still need some work to make that happen? So I, SMI has um, different versions. Linkerd is on uh, V1 Alpha 1. Um, Open Service Mesh uh, is, will be on V1 Alpha 3. There are breaking changes between APIs. So um, what, what's, what's going to happen is Flagger has to implement every version. Then when you install Flagger for Open Service Mesh, you have to tell it, hey, use um, Alpha 3 as the version. So, I see. Yeah. So, so that means uh, the first thing we need to do if we want to support uh, OSN uh, is we need to upgrade or we need to make Flagger support the latest version of SMI, right? Yeah. OK. There's also another question in the chat box uh, is about uh, Flagger uh, compared to Argo rollout. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, the um, Argo rollout uh, is very different from what Flagger does. Flagger works at um, deployment level. Argo rollout works at replica set level. So it will, um, it's um, implementation over the replica set. So that's that's very different in terms of how you um, how you define all these all these things. For example, in Argo rollouts, you cannot use your deployments. You have to change from deployments to um, rollout or however you call it. Um, one of the reasons we made Flagger reference a deployment the, the same way an horizontal pod autoscaler reference a deployment and doesn't come with the whole deployment spec inside of it is because. We, uh, at the beginning, we wanted Flagger to be able to take over um, applications while they're running in production. And I've seen a lot of users doing that. So by just, you know, changing all the deployment spec, all the charts, all the Helm charts that maybe you don't even control is not, wasn't an option for us. So that, I think that's, that's one of the, the main differences. Of course, there are lots of uh, differences between them, but that's, that's the main one uh, in terms that Flagger, like, like the horizontal pod autoscaler reference something, it doesn't contain all the, the actual definition of your app, the deployment, the service, and so on. Let me look at the... Other questions? No. Okay, I think uh, that is uh, what we have uh, for Flagger folks. And again, thank you very much for joining the meeting and do the presentation. And uh, we're very happy to see uh, 
what's next for Flagger and uh, their exciting about this roadmap, especially you mentioned the Ingress version two, Ingress V2. I, I personally uh, really think it's uh, it's really a big change for the community because right now we have so many Ingress controllers and uh, this really makes uh, integration with such kind of thing is uh, very hard. So I'm also trying to looking at what is the direction of Ingress V2 is going to. And we're happy that Flagger have it in its own roadmap. Okay, so we are pretty much here for the first project presentation. And next, uh, we will have a uh, Litma Scales folks uh, to do a upgrade update for their project, especially uh, after it has been donated to CNCF as part of the CNCF project. So what's next? Uh, what's the current status? And any new features we should be aware of? Um, so let's, okay, so Uma. Uh, to take over from here. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Harry. Uh, let me first figure out uh, the annotation, disable, and the annotation. Okay. Perfect. So the Zoom wise, we are safe now. Okay. That was a great presentation from Stephen. Uh, I'm going to look it up, uh, especially, you know, Litmus really operates in, the, in that space. Um, so what I thought is uh, really give a quick presentation uh, on um, what did we achieve in the last three months. Um, so I'll probably show a few actual uh, updates. Uh, not really, I don't have a detailed slides, um, but uh, this is just a 10 to 15 minutes update. Uh, so our uh, mission stay, first of all, we started using <laughs> Sandbox uh, logo. So that's uh, great. Uh, I think the community is really um, growing after we got into uh, Sandbox. There are more people trying out. Um, so that's definitely great news. Um, a lot of value being added for the project itself. Um, so thank you, uh, CGAP Delivery uh, Leads, uh, who have uh, done a detailed bit due diligence and all. So our mission statement continues to be um, finding weaknesses in the implementation of uh, either Kubernetes platform or the applications uh, that are deployed. Uh, resiliency reliability is uh, of foremost importance for um, both these um, personas. And uh, our uh, little bit medium to longer term mission statement also is to help uh, chaos become uh, a uh, very easy to use um, for developers as well. It right? is an extension um, to their development uh, process or within the CA pipelines. But right now, we're really trying to concentrate um, our roadmap uh, short term to help SREs do chaos end to end and get some validation of their uh, existing operations or setups. So contributions, my data continues to be uh, the prime sponsor, but uh, the great news is that there is a lot of community embracement happening. Intuit uh, has uploaded uh, their work on uh, AWS um, with Litmus and uh, Amazon uh, itself um, is pitching in. One of the contributors from Amazon is helping with docs and uh, Ring Central is helping with uh, Helm chart management. So we're actually, we had a problem of, um, you know, how do we deal with uh, so many various types of contributors? So we did uh, take some inspiration from SIGS, but I'll talk about it. And uh, one of the primary uh, assets of this project itself is Hub. That's, uh, we continue to uh, get appreciation from uh, having this all these experiments in a central place. So in the last three months, um, we really grow um, grew the project uh, usage by almost 100 percent. We were about uh, 50,000 experiments uh, runs uh, when we submitted the project to uh, to a sandbox uh, as an application. Uh, within a few months, actually, uh, the usage is doubled and uh, we of course added uh, uh, more experiments um, from the community. So I just put one slide where uh, I will use this uh, as a guiding slide and then go to a couple of blogs and other stuff to show. Um, 
I am not talking much about what our own team did, rather what community did and how the project is actually growing inside the community. Those are the highlighted uh, updates. So first of all, uh, uh, we have now a dedicated community manager to help with community questions and uh, to run a better Slack communication, um, et cetera, being available to run more meetups to go present litmus in other meetups. So uh, he's here as well, Prithvi. So welcome to the project, Prithvi. We added uh, four projects, uh, sorry, experiments, and uh, there are many more in the making. And uh, one of the good things that happened was um, Octato project uh, integration. Um, so uh, Octato is a, a namespace uh, provider for developers, Kubernetes environment at namespace level. So um, they have taken Litmus and provided uh, it is an option to introduce chaos. So um, that actually opened up um, a very good uh, new persona where we always needed uh, kind of CRDs need to be installed. So we needed uh, admin privileges to run uh, Litmus, but uh, this requirement uh, gave up uh, uh, that strong uh, requirement and uh, gave, gave gave an opportunity for us to rethink uh, the personas. So I'll probably uh, talk about it. So that's a great uh, update. And uh, we also have a um, new website, uh, which of course is according to the guidelines. And along with the new website, uh, website. We also got a contribution from um, an open source contributor, a new mascot for Chaos. So that was a surprise. Uh, so this is an SRE, a Chaos bird uh, trying to do experiments. So the community was pretty much geeked about it. <laughs> it was a minor thing, but it was pretty awesome that this came from the community. Um, so we also updated uh, a Chaos hub. Um, to with some uh, more easy to use uh, features. Um, uh, apart from easy to search, uh, there were uh, one thing that community wanted, hey, your experiments are great, but um, I need to add uh, or tweak the experiments after. Uh, so for that, I need to download, is there a way your hub can pro provide integrated editor so all these experiments uh, can now be uh, updated uh, uh, on that uh, local cache in the browser. Um, you can just update them, tune them, and then apply them. So this is a great way for making the usage of experiments pretty easy. Uh, you have copy, paste, replace, uh, the regular ML editor, but it's available. Uh, though it's small um, technical enhancement, uh, it makes it uh, the user experience much more uh, easier. Uh, this was another thing that requested by community and then we added. Um, and uh, we also got uh, very organically uh, engineers from Azure test team and then someone from Rancher community. They have tested all the experiment uh, of Hikmas on that platform and send PRs uh, that, hey, can you add this as a certified platforms? So that was a great uh, addition. Um, uh, and then we also got uh, container solutions have done uh, a good study on open source chaos engineering tools. And um, this was a uh, good information for me as well on uh, how other projects so both the CNCF projects are uh, covered. Uh, Litmus and Chaos Mesh, they both are uh, um, coming almost uh, with the same feature scoring, but it's great to see that uh, Chaos Engineering uh, is being covered as part of the CNCF uh, uh, encouragement. Uh, both the projects are scoring pretty high. Uh, so that was uh, one good thing for the community. And uh, other thing, we run monthly meetings and uh, community meetings. Uh, we wanted to uh, mentor some teams uh, who are coming in um, in different areas. So we took uh, the inspiration from uh, SIGS, ENCF or Kubernetes SIGS. 
So I think some other projects are also doing uh, machinery, for example. Um, so we have done, uh, we have created some SIGs, the concept of SIGs within Litmus, and uh, we try to have uh, once in a month or on-demand basis uh, the SIG meetings recently, the DOC, doc SIG, as well as the deployment SIGs, uh, some meetings have happened. So how we do that is uh, we did not create any projects, but uh, we uh, made use of, um, um, if, if you go to the teams on, in, on the Litmus Chaos organization, so we basically defined uh, uh, teams, um, and these are, uh, you know, whoever wants to come participate, uh, they'll be added as part of that. And uh, this is like a pretty simple way of telling the community that, um, you know, there are multiple groups you can choose observability or deployments or integrations or documentation, wherever you are interested. Um, it looks like chaos is applicable to almost all areas or across the CNCF landscape. So there's a good amount of interest that is coming in. So this is one way where uh, we're able to um, segregate uh, the big interest into smaller groups so that uh, more contributors can come and drive uh, themselves. Um, the idea is uh, somebody will find themselves as a major uh, contributor or driver within that group and then they will add um, uh, the product roadmap prioritization list uh, to the entire project. So that's uh, another thing that we started um, that's received pretty well from some parts of the community. And uh, the other one, um, we are getting a, a lot of new queries um air gap support was requested from you know somebody in from community i think uh shantanu who's here so we added uh, some additional help there arm support was another uh, top request uh, we added that as well um in terms of a roadmap uh, the our team has been very busy in developing a litmus portal um, which I'll show it's not yet released, uh, but Alpha is going to come out later this month. Um, but the idea of Litmus Portal is um, it's not just about experiments for uh, Kubernetes resources or applications, but um, SRA should be able to create or uh, orchestrate complex chaos workflows um, in order to find the deep level um, uh, weaknesses in their operational deployments. So a good portal is needed, uh, easy to use, monitoring is very, very important and what's happening to my chaos workflow. So a lot of um, work is going on and uh, we have embedded the entire Argo workflow uh, into the project. Uh, what I mean is um, uh, Argo experiment workflow uh, wraps all these experiments and then we call that as chaos workflow but it just gets uh, done uh, in a um, declarative way, uh, which has got a UI support in the front end as well. And we've been getting a lot of inbound interest uh, in terms of we need Grafana dashboards. Uh, Chaos is great, it's very easy to use, but how do I monitor, right? So, and um, there are a lot of uh, existing experiments. We got uh, um, more updates as well as more queries. Uh, our intention to help in terms of uh, can we have more granular tunables uh, within uh, a chaos hub. So this is, so that's probably the update. And uh, these are some of the Grafana dashboards that uh, are in the making. Uh, they'll go about uh, in this release, we have a monthly release cadence. So the whole idea is um, Prometheus metrics and Grafana, there's a lot wealth of information, um, but um, when something happens, you can easily know, uh, but with um, chaos, litmus, you are willfully introducing these faults. So you need to know what was that problem? Was it during chaos injection or did it naturally occur? And uh, we needed to know, um, or we needed to give that perspective of, uh, uh, willful fault, uh, simulated fault versus the organic one. Um, so this is an example. If you are taking a, a CPU node, you can see that this chaos was introduced, uh, a node chaos most likely, and you can see that node increase. So it's um, 
it's uh, it's also a good uh, once it is introduced there was some issues with that node the node utilization was not coming down so it could, you could say that we found an issue there but a lot of things can be um, interpreted um, as a weakness or uh, you know as a strength so this is an example of a, a well known microservices demo application from WeWorks Sock Shop. So we took that and uh, we added uh, a bit of chaos metrics uh, and chaos uh, uh, bar graphs to that, uh, area graphs. And uh, this is actually coming, uh, contributed or the process of being contributed uh, by uh, the community. And uh, they are also coming in and uh, doing um, a lot of um, new uh, developments uh, to the SIG observability area. So that's uh, really heartening to see. And the other thing that uh, I think uh, we just started, uh, we probably need to uh, work with the uh, captain team, uh, Alois and other things. Uh, we did not find a lot of bandwidth, but we did research uh, captain and how uh, it actually, both captain team approached us and then there were some other um, community members asking for you're able to do chaos um, but how do i interpret uh, the results uh, monitoring is great but uh, we needed uh, to see if we are really uh, when a fault was introduced uh, did uh, some slos um, fall off right um, so that's the idea so we're trying to not use all um, features of captain but uh, just the quality gates feature they're very nice uh, features so end users can use uh, both captain and um, uh, litmus together um, just like litmus and workflow sorry or go workflows were used to create chaos workflows from chaos experiments captain can be used um, to integrate quality gates as well so we see that you know a lot of CNCF projects are coming together, becoming uh, more solutions. We are also trying to focus. Uh, if we are integrating, it is better be um, a CNCF project. So that way, people um, not only uh, adopt, but there is more uh, community engagement as well. Um, the other thing that uh, we are dealing with right now is multi-tenancy. Uh, looks like uh, Kubernetes has introduced um, good features in, in, in with respect to multi-tenancy and we also did uh, some small uh, survey or research uh, among various forums. Um, the Somebody here can give more feedback, but at least what we got to know is um, many team members using a single Kubernetes cluster is uh, not an uncommon scenario. Uh, so what it really means that they would expect whatever the Kubernetes environment that I would need for development, I will um, I will have it uh, on a given Kubernetes cluster within a namespace. Um, so we did bank on CRDs heavily, uh, the entire architecture. So CRDs need um, uh, privileges admin privileges so though we have now introduced admin mode and namespace mode there is something called standard mode also um, the whole idea is uh, we are working towards making litmus usable by end developers or sres who may not have admin privileges so that it's it's pretty easy um, to use and uh, there are some thoughts about uh, developing config map based uh, uh, approach rather than uh, CRDs, um, but easy uh, option is let at least the admin use the CRDs, install the CRDs and later developers or other people can come and uh, uh, use litmus within the namespaces. So that's another thing. There's still a lot of discussion is going on in the community, but uh, that's I thought is an interesting update to share. So overall, I think we are uh, progressing very well, getting a lot of support from different um, different uh, communities within uh, CNCF. So thank you very much. And uh, we're looking forward to getting a little bit more advice from 
various uh, projects uh, as we get a little bit more uh, popular. So that's all I have, um, but I'm happy to take any questions. Well, thank you very much, Uma, and I'm very happy to see the progress that the uh, litmus scale was made uh, after joining the CNC. And I'm very happy to see that there is uh, positive feedback from the community and the growth and the usage of this project. So we now have don't have a lot of time for questions, but I'd like to check if anyone has any questions so we can let Uma answer. All right, I will post that slides uh, in the meeting notes. Harry. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. please uh, link these slides uh, to the uh, community uh, meeting notes so other folks who cannot join meeting can still check uh, what's going on in the meeting and uh, what you guys presented over there. So, well, really appreciate it for uh, the presentation from Uma and Stanford about Flagger and uh, lit Litmus scales. Uh, we will try to engage more people uh, to present their awesome project, regardless of whether they are part of CNCF or not, or they have any motivation to donate it or not. Uh, we are trying to make this seek a more uh, collaborative and open community for people to talk to each other, share knowledge about application delivery and uh, application development. So uh, I hope that we will have more uh, projects present uh, uh, in, in the upcoming meetings. And uh, if you guys have any idea or any project you want to see, and I will have it very happy to uh, talk with you and I will try to reach out to the project as, as much as I can to have, you know, these, these, these awesome ideas present in the uh, SIG meeting. Okay, so I think we are pretty much uh, uh, over, uh, well, we're, we're pretty much done for uh, today's meeting. And uh, again, really thank you for everybody joining this meeting. And uh, I will be super looking forward to see you uh, folks seeing you next time. So bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you very much.